do, I guess. Well, I thought. Let me look and see what I did here. That's kind of what I did here. I just didn't take as long to get there. So, yeah. If you combine the R's, you get, you know, distribute that, combine the R's, you end up with R equals 32. Ohms. So the original one was 32. This one was 8. So the equivalent resistance was 40, but you weren't asked about that. Yes? I thought that the thing with series was that the current stayed the same throughout. It, it's, it's the same in the entire circuit. It's the same everywhere. But if you change the battery or you change resistors, that changes I. I depends on the V and the R. Okay. But for any particular battery and any particular set of R's, I will be the same everywhere. That's the point about I. It's not going to be different up here than it is down there. Okay. Does everybody see what to do there with 41? Okay. That was series. The thing about series is that the current's the same everywhere. If you have more than one R, you add them up. That's why we put R plus 8 there. And then V equals IR, of course, applies. Okay, let's look at number 50. The answer to 50, I'll go ahead and tell you, is 446 ohms. Do we need to do that one? Yeah. Okay, somebody read number 50. Okay. Um, what resistance must be placed in parallel with a 155 ohm resistor to make the equivalent resistance 115 ohms? Our EQ is 115, is that what you said? Yep. And this is one of the R's. Yeah, wait, but read it again. Was this series or parallel? It's parallel. Oh, this is parallel. So for parallel, you know, one over R EQ equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And the question was, what if, if R1 is 155, then what's the other one if the equivalent resistance is 115? Did I get that right? Um, R1 is 155, yeah, okay. but the equivalent resistance is 115. So what would that be? Just do the math and solve that for R. So 1 over R is equal to 1 over 15, 115 minus 1 over 155. Calculate what that is and invert it to get R. R comes out to be 446 ohms. So if you're, if you're getting this but still getting the wrong answer, you're just doing the math wrong. So figure that out or come see me sometime and I'll help you. That's, that's what R would equal. The physics is simply realizing if it's parallel, you got to plug numbers in this way. 1 over R. Okay. And number 59, it's probably also parallel, isn't it? Okay. Sophia. Okay. Number 59. Yes. Yeah. The total current delivered to a number of devices connected in parallel is the sum of the individual currents in each device. Circuit breakers are resettable automatic switches that protect against a dangerously large total current by opening to stop the current at a specified safe value. A 1,650-watt toaster, a 1,090-watt iron, and a 1,250-watt microwave. Are you going to have to repeat those. Okay. So that's the first thing. Yes. 1650 watts. Okay, then the next what? is 1090 watts. 1090? Yes. Watts for that one. And what else is there? 1250. 1000 what? 250. Okay, and those are watts. That's not ohms, but mm -hmm. I'm drawing resistors because that's what they are. Yeah. But that's watts. Okay, what else? As the drawing shows they are all connected through a 20 amp circuit breaker which has neg negligible resistance to an a an ac voltage of 120 volts 120 volts okay find the equivalent resistance of the three devices well that, and then 
B, obtain the total current derived by the source and or the obtain the total current delivered by the source and determine whether the breaker will open to prevent an accident. Okay, the circuit breaker means uh, if the current ever gets above 20 amps, it's going to turn turn itself off. Uh, because the wiring is designed for a certain number of amps, uh, if and it's only, and it's the thickness of the wire, and if you uh, exceed what the wire is designed for, the wire gets too hot and can catch on fire. Houses burn down because they don't have circuit breakers. Okay. Anyway, um, first question is REQ. It's in parallel, so you know you're going to use this. To get it, but we don't know any of the R's yet. So the whole thing is, can we come up with the three R's? And what we know is power. So use you. You do need to know, have in your head, I think, the power equations. And the first one that I always think of is this. However, I don't know the current in any of these wires right now. Um, I do know the power that's given, and I know what else? Voltage. The voltage. Because what you've learned about parallel is that the Vs are all the same. They're all 120. If you put a voltmeter around this one resistor, it's going to say 120 volts. This one's also 120 volts. This one's also 120 volts. So I would use V squared over R, that version of the power equation and solve it for R. That's how you get the three R's. So for example, in the first one, you can put 1650 is equal to, oops, we know what V is, 120 squared divided by R, and you can solve that for R. And so I did that for each of the three, probably. The first one I have R is 8.73. not rounding it off too much. 8.73 ohms. For the second one, I got 13.2 ohms. And for the third one, I got 11.5 ohms. And again, that's just plugging into this equation, the power they gave you and 120 squared. Solve it for R. Once you know the R's, you just put them down here. That's 8.73. And that is 13.2. And that one is 11.5 and solve that for REQ. And that came out to be 3.6. Now, that's not the only way to do this. I'm pretty sure that's kind of a long way, but to me that makes sense. If I want to know REQ, I need to find the three R's. The other thing you could have done that you probably didn't know, you could. When you know the, the power rating for three things, you can just add up the powers. You can add up the P's. And that's true no matter what kind of circuit it is. If you want the power used up for the entire circuit, add 1650 and 1090 and 1250. And I don't know if I did that or not, but um, if you go back to this equation again, P is Z squared over R. You could have done it all at once. I'm just letting you know this by Letting this P be the sum of all of all of all the three. 1650 and 1090 and 1250. Add all that together and let that be 120 squared over R. That would have given you, because that's total power, that's total voltage, that'll give you total resistance. You could have done it all at once. You get the same thing. 3.6. Okay. Everybody get number 59 now? Any questions about it? All right. I want to mention some more things about series and parallel. <coughs> For all of you listening on the video, my voice is better than yesterday. Would you say it's better than yesterday? Yeah. But it's still not very strong. And I apologize for the sound quality the sound quality of my voice all right there's some interesting things i'm going to show you that you need to know about series and parallel 
Here's a, here's a series circuit with three resistors. And here is a series, is a parallel circuit with the same three resistors. Same three, same three. Same battery. Same battery, same resistors. The only difference is here they're connected in series, here they're connected in parallel. Which one has more current flowing out of the battery? If you put an ammeter here, it's measuring the total current coming out of the battery just like this ammeter is. Total current coming out of the battery. Which one would be more? Or would they be the same? How many think this one would be more? Who thinks this one would be more? Well, I saw a few hands on both, but a lot of you didn't vote. Okay, <laughs> change the question. Which one has a greater equivalent resistance? If you're going to replace all three of those with one, here you're going to replace all three with one. Which one would be a bigger R? This would be. Because here you just add them up, right? All right, let's do a quick example. Let's let them be, oh, let's let them all be five ohms. Every one of them is five ohms. Well, the equivalent resistance here is 15 ohms. Pretty easy, right? What would this one be? 1 over 15 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over, I'm sorry, I'm writing 15. 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 is 1 over R. That's 3 fifths, so what is R? 5 over 3 uh, ohms, which is 1 and 2 thirds ohms. 1.67 ohms. 15 ohms. See how much more that is than this. So that's why you all agreed the series has greater equivalent resistance. Now, what if it is a... Here, without giving you a battery, Look at Ohm's law. Look at Ohm's law. They all have the same V. The series is 15. The parallel is less than two. Which one's going to have more current now? Parallel. Parallel has a lot more current. See, that's an inverse proportion. So the one with smaller R will have greater I. Let's go ahead and calculate what it would be if this was say a 15 volt battery that makes it easy for this one what's the current down here one amp it's 15 divided by 15. the total current coming out of the battery is 15 i'm sorry it's one amp what is it over here i don't know what's 15 divided by 1.67 it's what nine I can't tell what you're saying. Who has an answer? Blurt it out loud. Nine. I still can't hear you, Jack. Nine. Nine? Yeah. Did you say nine? Yeah. Nod your head would be good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Is that right, Sophia? It's 8.98. So okay, we're going to round Oh, up what the heck? Amps. Now, look at the difference in the current. One amp. 9 amps, you get more current flowing from the battery when you put the same resistors in parallel. A lot more current coming out of the battery. Now here's another thing. What if I added another 5 ohm resistor in parallel? The current, would the current still be 9? Or would it be more than nine or now less than nine? Less. More? Yeah, but you're divided by a larger. It'd just be five fourths. What happens to REQ? Is REQ now going to be more than it was before? It was 1.67. Is it going to be more than that or less than that? Less than that. It's going to be less. Isn't it? If that's less, what's that? More. More. It's going to be more than nine if you add another one. What if you add another one? It's going to be what? 
more or less than that. Last one. More. The more you the more you add, the lower this gets here. The more branches you add, the lower this number gets, so the greater this number gets. Now that's just a concept to get in your head. When you're working with parallel, the more branches you add to, to that same battery, the more branches you add, the smaller this number gets. So the greater this number gets. So you need to realize in your house, if you have two things plugged in in your room and then you plug in three, two more, you're increasing the current going to your room. And you plug in some more, you're increasing the current again. Eventually it might get more than the circuit breaker can handle and the circuit breaker shuts down. Why? You plug too many things in. And they're all in parallel. Everything you plug into your house is in parallel. Because everything needs the same voltage. In parallel, they're all getting the same voltage to work. But when you plug more things into the same circuit, you're getting more and more current going into, into that one circuit. Your house has a bunch of different circuits, so your room may not be on the same circuit as somebody else's room. But if you plug in too many things and they're all working on the same circuit, eventually the circuit breaker shuts it down. And you have to go find the circuit breaker box in your house and turn it back on and hopefully turn some of your stuff off. Yeah, okay, yes. Is there anything in like real life that's just a sphere circuit? <laughs> I mean, like yes. in real life, not as much. Uh, there are no buildings yeah. built where the electricity is is designed in series circuits. No. Why? Well, it's because it's everything needs the same voltage. Okay. Here, they they don't have the same voltage. I mean, they don't have that. They'll have less. And so if everything needs 120 volts, which is kind of what that is when you plug it into that socket, everything is designed to work on that. So you've got to do it all in parallel so everything has, has the same voltage. But the current has a limit. That's why, the, that's why the breaker box is there, the circuit breaker. There's a limit to how much current can go. And if you really do plug in too many things, then it will shut it down. So it won't burn your house down. Yes. Now, over here, let's answer the same question. What's going to happen now if I add another 5 ohm resistor to what I had before? What happens to the current now? It goes down. It goes down, doesn't it? Because now you've got more resistance, that, that increase, because you're just adding these up. See, now you have 20 ohms. So that's more. The battery's the same, so that has to be more or that has to be less, I'm sorry, inverse proportion. If that's more, that's less. So the more, the more resistors you put in series, the smaller the current gets. Okay, what if these resistors are really light bulbs? Ooh, it's gonna get bright in here. What happens to the brightness of the light <coughs> when you, Add more light bulbs. It, it gets less because there's less current. P equals IV. Or uh, the third version of that is P is I squared R. Even if these all have the same R, as you as you as you add more of them to the series, the total I is going to get less. And I is the same everywhere here. Remember, so the current flowing through that one bulb is going to be less because you've got more resistance now. And if the current's less, the power is less. Power is watts. That's the brightness. Okay. So adding more light bulbs here gives you dimmer and dimmer lights. What about over here? By adding more, if these are light bulbs, adding more light bulbs, what happens to the brightness? Don't tell me it goes up because I'm not happy with that. <laughs> Wait, what was the question? Oh, Does, by adding by adding more light bulbs, just added another one. What happens to how bright the bulbs are? Does it increase, decrease, or stay the same? It's just light. They all get brighter. Here we said they all get dimmer. 
when you add more light bulbs because there's less current. Here there's going to be more current. We've learned that. If you keep adding branches, you get more current coming out of the battery. But what happens to the current when it hits a junction? Some goes down each branch, and, and you've got a, a whole new branch to go down. So it stays the same. Stays the same. The brightness. There is more total current, but it's the same current going down each branch. Because you have more total current, but you've got another branch to, to split it among. That's how to think about it. Yes. Okay. So. And the V doesn't change. All right, go ahead. I get how like mathematically this checks out, but if there's a battery and it has 15 volts, you know, like we've been saying, like it does doesn't it have to be using more electricity for more light bulbs, more power? It it. Um, Yes. Yeah. So more current's coming out of the battery. Okay. The voltage is the same. I see you're, you're, you're kind of mixing voltage and current. You're thinking, how could that same battery need more current? That's probably what you're thinking. I don't know if it is or not. How can adding another light bulb make the battery do more? It's not really doing more, but it is sending more current. So it seems like it's doing more. But it'll, so it'll run out faster? It, yeah. I mean, it, the, it all okay. works. That's fine. Um, You know that in your house, if you plug in more things, the lights don't get brighter or dimmer, either one, do they? And your house is, is built in parallel. So just from your experience with a building, the brightness of the light stays the same, no, how, no matter how much stuff is plugged in. So that's another evidence that that's true. Yes. Are these the only two kinds of circuits? Yes. Okay. Well, the third kind is combining them into one. Or, or having a circuit where part of it's series and part of it's parallel. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay. What time do we get out today? 50. Is it 50? Okay, we're good. All right. Um, is there anything else I was going to say about this? Um, I will mention this also. Yeah, one more thing about this. Series. What if, what if you just have, you have a 15 volt battery and there's only one light bulb and um, it's, um, uh, and it's five ohms. Okay, what would the current be? Let's do that real fast. The current would be 15 divided by five, which would be three amps. Okay, three amps of current coming out of here. Um, how much energy per second is the light bulb using? You know what I'm asking when I say it that way? What is energy per second? It's called what? Power. So what's the power <coughs> dissipated by the light bulb? It could be worded that way. So what is P? I pick a P equation that, that has stuff in it you know. Well, you know I, N, B, N, R. You know everything. So which one do you like? How about I -V. I, V. What's 3 times 15? Uh, 30, 45 watts. Is 3 times 15 really 45? 30, yeah. Okay. So 45 watts is being used up by that light bulb. What if that light bulb is only a... 20 watt light bulb. Well, it's gonna. What die. happens to the bulb? It's gonna blow. Ooh, it's, gonna, wow. it's, it's too much energy for it to handle. We don't need that. So, what if you know it's 20 watts and you know that's 15 volts? And so you can do the math and realize, oh, that, that multiplies to 45, but it's only 20 watts. I don't wanna burn my light bulb. Put some more on there. What might I do down here to save my light bulb? I can put in another resistor in series. Would that help though, or, or would that hurt? Another one. That would that would help it because the voltage, remember, is divided between the two. 
Remember what we learned about voltage for a series is that you can add the two Vs to get 15. So now by adding another resistor, the V here is not going to be 15 anymore. If the V is not 15, because remember P is equal to IV, V is going to be less for the bulb, and also there's going to be less current. You've got another resistor. So both will help you get the P down to maybe 20. So what if the question is, what should this R be? What resistance should I put in here to make this really 20 watts? Okay, well, what I know now is that I want this to be, well, let's figure out what the current needs to be here. Um, I squared R. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, I want to know what the current is. If I want the power to really be 20, and I know the resistance of the bulb is 5, somebody calculate what that would be. 20 divided by 5 is 4, two. so I would be 2. Is that correct? Yeah. That means I can't have more than 2 amps. Okay? For this bulb, not to blow, I can't have more than 2 amps. If the I is going to be 2, now I can go back and try to figure out what that's going to be because um, the V, here let's do totals. The total V is going to be the total I plus the REQ. This is all total stuff for the entire circuit. Well, the total V is 15 volt battery. We know that. The total I we just figured can't be more than two. And, and the REQ is going to be five plus something. Because in series, you add them. Now you can solve that for R, R can't you? I don't know what it is. It's 15 divided by two, seven and a half. Seven and a half minus five is two and a half. Is that the right answer? Mm -hmm. Two and a half ohms. So that could be 2.5 ohms. And if you put that in there, then this goes down to 20 watts. Okay. So I'm just showing you some kind of things you might have to think about when you are dealing with series in parallel. All right, there are more things I'd like to show you, but we don't have time. So I'm going to introduce you to the concept of a circuit that has both series and parallel in it. Let's look at one example of that. This is just a combination circuit. If it's a combination circuit that's got series and parallel both somewhere in the circuit. So a really simple one might look like this. Um, that's, that's two resistors in series, right? But what if we go over here and do this? Now, these two are still in series with each other. That's one path between those two. But now there's another branch. This is in parallel with those. That's a combination circuit. What if you ask, what is the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit? And let's let everything be 10 ohms. Here's what I would recommend, because sometimes these get really complicated. This is a really simple one. Redraw it. Okay, same battery, but now I'm going to redraw it where I'm going to combine these two. How do you combine two resistors that are in series with each other? You add them. So this is now going to be 20 ohms. This one back here is still 10. That's the same one that was there. Okay, so this circuit's the same as that, you see? Now, I only have two resistors and they are in parallel with each other. So my final drawing just has one resistor and it's 1 over 20 plus 1 over 10 is equal to 1 over R. And that would be 3 twentieths. 20 divided by 3 is almost 7. So that's, I don't know, six point something. 
Okay, see what we did? If you need to find the equivalent resistance for this, that's how you do it. Put, don't try to do it all at once, put these two together and then take that one and combine it with this because it's a totally different process, series and parallel. Then if you want to know what's the current, what if the question was way back here, right? What does the ammeter say? Well, you can't tell by looking at that diagram, but you can tell from this one. If you know the voltage of the battery, that's just one resistor, it's just uh, I is V over R. So you can, you can do that now with this, with this drawing. Okay. Uh, what if, instead of looking like that, it looks like this? What if it is... Um, um, what is that? What are you going to do first? We're going to redraw it. But how do I redraw it? You're going to, you can't put all three of these together at one time. Let's say again, they're all 10 ohms. And we want to know REQ. You can't put all three together at once. But you can put two of them together first, like we did a moment ago. Which two are you going to put together first? One on the top and one on the side. This one and... See, there's a now here's an important lesson if there is a branch a fork in the road between two resistors then they're in parallel see that's not in series with either one of these it is in parallel with the group but we don't know what that group is first thing you should do is put these together because they're in parallel with each other if I do that, I've still got the 10 up here. I'm going to ignore that. And instead of these two branches, I'm going to put them together into one. It's going to look like this when I'm done. All right, that's 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 is 1 over R. That's 2 tenths, which is 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Okay? And then what's the equivalent resistance? Because now I have a circuit that's in series. You just add them. Uh, so the answer is 15 ohms. See what we did? If you try to add this one to one of these, well, you can't just add it because there's a branch in between. You can only add them when there's no branch. There's just one path between. That's series. This is not series. It is parallel, but, it's, but in parallel with which one? Well, both of them. So you've got to figure out what that is first. Okay. That's how combination circuits work. Once you get it down to one equivalent resistance, then you can use Ohm's law to figure out whatever else you need. And here, let's finish this. What if the question had been, what is the voltage drop around that resistor? Okay, and maybe we know that this was, this was 120 volts. Well, this is, going to, this is not going to be 120. It's in parallel with that one, but you can't follow the leads back to the battery without going through a resistor. So this is not going to be 120. Okay? But what is it? Well, the only way to really, if you try to figure it out here, you're going to get yourself all messed up. Go back to here and ask yourself, well, what is... Well, what is the voltage drop here? That's not a hard question. That one is 120. Okay, but what I don't know about this one is the current. So let's find what you don't know. All right, the current would be V, 120, divided by R, 15. Somebody tell me real fast what that is. What's it? 10.33. It's what? 10.3. That's 8. It's eight. It's eight? Yeah. Okay. So eight amps is the total current. If the question had been, hey, what's the total current coming out of the battery? We just found it. It's eight amps coming out of the battery because here, this is the same. Remember these three circuits are all, these drawings are all the same. 
So if you know the total current coming out of the battery here, that's what it is there. Now you know this is eight amps. All right, back it up to the next drawing. This is the same circuit, it's still series, so here the current's also eight amps. And now what I can find is the voltage drop just right here. That was the same color. Because V is equal to IR. And I, I know the I now is eight. And the R right here is just five. So I'm finding the voltage drop just around this one resistor here. So it's not 120. It's going to be 40, it looks like. Uh, five times eight. The current's the same everywhere in series. The voltage is going to be less than 120. The V's would add up to 120. But this one's going to be 40. All right. I now know that's 40 volts. If I then follow that back to the next drawing, I've got my answer because what's true about V's in parallel? They're the same. If that V is 40, then this V right here is also 40. If I put a voltmeter on that one, it would also be 40. So that's the answer to the question. All right, what if the question was, what does this ammeter right here say? Now the total is eight, we've already found that, but this one's not gonna be eight, is it? This becomes an easy question now though, because all of the R's are the same. Who can tell me what that is without having to do much math? What would the ammeter say in this one branch? Oh no, that's not. Eight amps hit that junction. Some of it goes here and some goes here. Yeah. The R's are the same. So what's true about the current? It's They're the, the same. same. No, the V's are the same, 40. What? The R's are the same, 10. So the current has to be the same, which would be what? What's 40 divided by 10? Four. four. I is four. You could all, so that is the answer, four amps. You could also though have thought, well, eight amps total, since the R's are the same, each branch is gonna get half. Yeah. So four and four. The two, the two I's have to add up to eight. If the R's were different, they wouldn't be the same, but they would still add up to eight. If one has more resistance, it would get less current. But the R's are the same, they're each gonna get half the current. Or you can just go back to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, and um, the V is 40, and the R is 10. Divide and you get four. Okay, this is the way you have to think. And I've been doing this for a hundred years and I still, <laughs> I still draw. I, I don't just look at that, I've got to draw it again with two and then I draw it again with one. And then when I work my way back, I've got pictures I'm looking at. Because the question might be something way back here, but you can't get the answer just by looking at that diagram. You never could have come up with eight amps just by looking at that diagram. Okay. That's combination circuits. Your homework tonight, I believe, is going to include some combination circuits. Here it is. I and J. I and J, Nate and Steve and Claire. See you later.